Hello, everybody. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Radio and TV Network Online. And today I am having Dr. Ted Toby with me. Um, and we'll introduce him shortly. Dr. Toby is uh, coming to us with a very interesting product. We'll introduce it shortly. It has to do with personal hygiene, but he's not just your ordinary doctor. He's an inventor, and he is uh, coming to us with a deep knowledge of chemistry and body physiology. So he's an interesting fellow. Dr. Ted Toby, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Martin. How are you doing today? Deodorants. It's such a simple, silly thing. You wouldn't really think much of it, and yet, right? Uh, absolutely true. Um, when I uh, talk with people about deodorants, uh, uh, it turns out, be, out to be very interesting uh, in terms of a conversation. Most people don't think about deodorants, yet, in fact, uh, what kind of chemical preparation can you think of that 95% of the U.S. adult population uses for 80% of their entire lives every day. These types of chemicals uh, that we apply to our bodies have the potential to cause various kinds of issues. We use them for good reason, but most people don't really think very much about these products, and perhaps they should. Yeah, indeed. I think that the uh, FDA has done a terrible job of not really making clear to people that transdermal delivery is an important pathway and they seem to pretend that cosmetics are somehow not going to get inside of the body or things that we apply to the body will not be just as inside of us as anything we eat. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, the FDA uh, does regulate some of these products, but there is a whole classification of products that they actually don't even look at. So if we're talking about cosmetics, and we're talking about deodorants, which are considered cosmetics, personal care products, uh, the FDA actually pays little or no attention to these products. If we're talking about antiperspirants, these are considered over-the-counter drugs, and they are indeed regulated by FDA. But there's a clear distinction between those two categories of products, and uh, there is an important issue in terms of how FDA looks at them. Although I wonder if the general public is making a clear enough distinction between the two. I oftentimes don't hear people be clear that an antiperspirant is actually making a significant change to physiology where the uh, deodorant does not. Right. I, uh, to clarify, uh, uh, deodorants uh, are products that are put on the skin to reduce body odor. They do that typically by a mechanism that is either suppressing or killing skin bacteria. So the common forms of skin bacteria like Carini bacteria, other uh, gram-positive bacteria live on the skin and uh, they can metabolize proteins, dead skin cells, hair cells, produce byproducts which create odor. The uh, most common um, common byproduct uh, for underarm odor is an acid called trans-3-methyl-2-hexanoic acid. And this creates rather unpleasant body odor that most people experience uh, if they don't use these kinds of products. So uh, deodorants are meant to suppress that bacterial growth and the production of these acids uh, by killing or controlling bacteria. Antiperspirants, on the other hand, have a totally different mechanism of action. They're really meant to reduce perspiration. They're meant to reduce sweating. Um, so if you actually look at the FDA uh, antiperspirants on the market, these are all aluminum-containing compounds, either aluminum chlorides or aluminum chlorohydrates or aluminum zirconium. But these products uh, release free aluminum onto the skin surface. That aluminum will combine with sweat and body salts to produce uh, gel-like plugs, and these plugs uh, block sweat gland pores, and that's the mechanism of action for these antiperspirant products. They also do, can and do uh, sometimes suppress bacterial growth, so they can sometimes have a deodorant effect, but the, the FDA-regulated drug is the aluminum product that's in these antiperspirants. I'm personally no fan of getting aluminum into a human body. 
the track record is not terribly good if it gets in your brain. Well, <laughs> aluminum is the most common uh, metal element uh, on the Earth's crust. Aluminum is, uh, is really ubiquitous. Aluminum is in uh, a lot of food sources. Uh, certainly, um, aluminum is used uh, very widely in cookware, acids, uh, like tomatoes, uh, vinegar, uh, uh, lemon juice, other acidic products will all help to dissolve some of the aluminum. So you don't want to leave uh, acids in cookware because you increase the aluminum content. We all do have um, uh, aluminum in our diet. We consume that. It's, uh, it's known. But uh, the recommendations are that uh, you don't uh, use excess amounts of aluminum in, in uh, these kinds of products because uh, there is some data to suggest that uh, aluminum, excess aluminum accumulation in the body can cause problems. It can accumulate in the liver, kidneys, brain, muscle. It can appear in the bloodstream. So um, there are some concerns that have been voiced about aluminum, and we can perhaps talk about that a little bit later if you're interested. I don't know how good the data is on this, but I've heard that uh, uh, breast problems are oftentimes linked to a lot of lifetime use of deodorants. So I'm not sure if the data is solid, but certainly I've heard enough anecdotal evidence on that. Well, the data that uh, I think you're referring to uh, has to do with concerns about uh, aluminum absorption through the skin from antiperspirant products, not deodorants, but antiperspirants its accumulation in body tissues. If it accumulates in the brain, uh, concerns were raised in the past that this might be a link to Alzheimer's disease. Um, there were concerns that uh, perhaps this was um, appearing in breast tissue in women, and that uh, there was a thought that maybe this had something to do with breast cancer development. Those were um, issues that uh, were discussed uh, and you can find on the internet uh, as long as 20 years ago. There have been actually multiple large studies looking at both questions because of the concerns and the recognition that we all are exposed to these kinds of aluminum compounds and we have aluminum in our diet. And the data seems to be that they can't replicate any specific pathology that they can point to that says this is a definite cause, this is a definite issue for the compounds. But nonetheless, those concerns still exist, and it's certainly possible that uh, we'll see under certain circumstances that they could be problematic. There was um, one um, issue that um, was uh, talked about, I think, uh, quite extensively in the early 2000s about a mill worker in, um, in London who uh, uh, was uh, grinding aluminum and uh, milling aluminum uh, for 20 years. And he developed a, a peculiar kind of Alzheimer's-like illness and dementia. And uh, I did in fact die and uh, had an autopsy done which demonstrated high levels of aluminum throughout many tissues of his body, including his brain. And so there was a concern that that aluminum deposition may have contributed to his memory impairment. We haven't seen other kinds of uh, cases like that. He, it was peculiar because he was working uh, in, um, in a uh, factory with high levels of aluminum that they could measure coming out of the air. So he was actually breathing in aluminum and he was absorbing it probably through his lungs. It was a warning that uh, we have to be cautious that uh, we don't expose ourselves to high levels of these potentially toxic uh, metals. Well, fortunately, we're going to not be talking about aluminum because your product contains none of it. The uh, deodorant that I'm using uh, in my product actually um, is a deodorant product that has been around for about 2,000 years. It was actually originally described uh, in ancient Rome by Pliny the Elder. He was a uh, friend of uh, Vespasian, the emperor. Vespasian uh, was uh, the father of Titus. He was the emperor that to help build the uh, Roman Colosseum. Uh, so this is 79 AD. And uh, Pliny the Elder talked about uh, uh, alum that was uh, obtained from uh, hard rock minerals, salts uh, that were dissolved in water and then dried and used 
on the skin as a deodorant product. And uh, it was well recognized that that was an effective deodorant back then. It's also interesting to know that uh, alum in this form was mined in Thailand in Southeast Asia for at least the last four to 500 years and has been used as a uh, deodorant there. Uh, if you go to India, you find out that potassium alum is used commonly as an aftershave uh, because it's, uh, it's a styptic, it's a, uh, an astringent uh, uh, mineral. It uh, contracts uh, blood vessels and coagulates blood, so it works well as an aftershave. And its antibacterial properties helps to uh, control the potential for infection uh, aftershave as well. So uh, this is a uh, product that's been around a long time. It's got demonstrated uh, safety over the last 2,000 years. Although uh, your application is quite novel. I mean, this alum has been, uh, of course, coincidence of words, right? Alum is not aluminium. It just sounds somewhat similar. And uh, I mean, we even have a similar product in our website. This Thai deodorant stone is right. not is not uh, a new thing. We've been offering it to our clientele, but I'm quite enthused about offering your product because of its novel application or applicator. Yeah, uh, well, let me, let me give you a little story about uh, how I uh, got involved with this product. Uh, I didn't begin thinking that I was uh, gonna become an inventor, but uh, I was sort of uh, cornered into it. Uh, when I was young, uh, I, uh, had tried uh, several different kinds of products, including some antiperspirants, and I had some skin issues with it. I uh, had uh, local irritation and redness and some potential allergic reaction. In fact, it got so bad that I eventually just had to stop using products altogether for a couple of weeks to allow the skin to heal because it was just red and inflamed. And over the course of that time, I started looking around at uh, what my options were and tried a number of different products. Eventually, I landed on a, uh, a solid crystal called Crystal Stick Deodorant. That actually uh, is the forerunner, I think, of one of the products that you may be selling on your website. Um, but it was simply a crystal of uh, alum uh, that was uh, milled into a cylinder. You would... Uh, uh, open up that container, you'd uh, put the uh, crystal stick underneath the water so uh, a little bit of water would dissolve some of that crystal off and you rub, rub it on your skin. And so that's how the product worked. And um, it was actually a good product in the sense that, uh, first of all, it worked, it performed well. Um, secondly, that uh, it was water-based so you didn't have any of the stickiness, gels, uh, other kinds of issues that uh, might cause skin irritation with it. So it, it didn't cause any problems for myself, but uh, it wasn't perfect. The applicator system is a little bit funky. Uh, you're gonna get your hands wet uh, uh, when you use it. It kind of drips uh, a bit here and there. Over time, uh, even though the crystal stick is supposed to last a number of months, uh, it does start to dissolve underwater. And when it does that, uh, it gets loose in that applicator system. So the screw mechanism is kind of loose, and if you're not careful, uh, after a couple of months, it will fall out of the applicator and uh, crash. Yep. Uh, so in fact, uh, I uh, used this product for about 40 years, and uh, I was uh, quite satisfied with it until one day uh, when I was getting ready for work, uh, I uh, took my handy crystal stick deodorant uh, out of the cabinet, uh, put it under the water, and uh, was rubbing it on and uh, turned to look at something, and it slipped, fell out of the holder, and uh, fell to the floor, shattering into hundreds of pieces. I was uh, trying to get to work. I didn't have anything else in the house. I didn't know what to do, so I took some of these larger pieces down to the kitchen. I took a rolling pin and uh, beat them up a bit and uh, put them in a... Uh, a cup of uh, lukewarm water, stirred it around, and uh, let it sit for a couple of minutes while I got, got a, a couple of uh, cotton, uh, cotton balls. I used those cotton balls uh, uh, with this liquid uh, as a deodorant preparation for the next week or so until I was able to get back to the store and buy more. But that whole process started me thinking, um, I really like this product, but this was just crazy. I just couldn't believe that uh, they 
had uh, such problems with their applicator system and it was so messy and you would get uh, you would get the product uh, you know ready down your arms and hands and uh, it would eventually uh, fall apart on you so uh, over the next year it, I uh, thought about uh, ways that this might be improved and uh, this led me down a path uh, actually over the next um, six or seven years to um, uh, develop a, a new applicator system and to try to improve on this product to uh, to create a, uh, a new uh, product that uh, I could really stand behind. And um, I think I've done that. The applicator system is uh, simple, uh, it's uh, ergonomic, it's uh, really intuitive and it's probably something that the uh, deodorant and antiperspirant industry should have done about 30 years ago. Uh, the issue with that is that um, Although the idea is simple, the technology to actually make it, to machine it, to uh, move the plastic around, to, uh, to uh, mold it, uh, was really not that sophisticated back then to be able to actually do it. Um, so uh, with uh, proper engineering, uh, materials engineers and consultants, uh, I was able to uh, go ahead and construct this. I have two patents on the applicator system, and uh, I've used that to, uh, to apply this product. I got the, um, the same alum compound that uh, is used in crystal stick deodorant. But if you think about it, uh, when you use crystal stick deodorant, you put that under water, you're probably dissolving about one tenth to maybe five tenths percent uh, solution of uh, mineral stick into that water. It's, it's a pretty, um, pretty uh, weak solution that you're putting on your skin. Yet that works pretty well for a lot of people. The solution that I'm using of potassium alum is 7%. So it's about 30 times more potent than what you might expect to get using the crystal stick product. So this is a high potency formulation. Do you happen to have one of those applicators handy? I do. So this is, uh, this is the product. And um, let me just take the cap off. And this is the applicator system. So let me just show you what that looks like. It's a hemisphere. Uh, it's got a handle built into the back. So uh, it's got a uh, pad on this hemisphere and a uh, uh, flexible nylon fabric that gets stretched over it and anchors that pad in place over the plastic backbone. And then it's anchored around the side. So I'm just going to set that down a minute. The deodorant product comes with a, uh, a liner for uh, preventing leakage during shipping, so you just take that out. And then you can put the applicator back on. Now, you would think that this is a, this is a water-based product, uh, and you would think that you have to be careful with it. Actually, you don't have to, have to be very careful. I'm just going to tip it upside down and let it uh, soak through the uh, applicator here. I'm gonna, this is a brand new bottle, so I'm gonna take it and move that applicator a few degrees, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm just wetting the applicator and getting that cotton sponge uh, wet. So once I do that, then I've got product mm -hmm. here. We're ready for business. We're ready for business, that's right. So you got a thin film of product. This actually goes on very quickly. Uh, one or two swipes and you're done and it gives just the right amount. Doesn't drip, doesn't leak, and uh, keeps your hands clean. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about the product. The product is the potassium alum. It's a high concentration of it. I'm using food preservatives for the preservative system. All products like this are gonna have some type of preservative. I'm using um, delta gluconolactone and sodium benzoate. These are both products that are used for food preservation. So it's not something that you need to worry about in terms of um, absorbing chemicals. It reminds me of pickles. That's right, because sodium benzoate is used to help uh, crisp pickles, um, and it's also used in baking powder. Right, and the lactic acid or lactones, that's, yep. again, right. that's the uh, lactic uh, fermentation systems that right. or pickle would use. Right, so this is a, uh, this is a very user-friendly product. It's high potency, it's a natural product, and we have a great applicator system. So that's why I'm bringing it to market. Fantastic. And uh, the good thing about it is that it's actually affordable. It's priced yeah. uh, completely comparable to the uh, stick-priced items, and uh, this will probably last a lot longer because 
you can expect longer life or utilization of every last drop of this. Uh, you're right. The, uh, the product uh, uh, is very efficient. You don't uh, have extra uh, product you're putting on your skin, so you're not uh, wasting it. It doesn't drip. Uh, you don't leak out of the jar. So, in fact, one of these jars, which is 100 milliliters, will last about four months with daily use. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty economical in that sense. Okay. Now, I heard you mention that you're actually the inventor of this applicator, that you have patented it. So uh, I guess if any of our listeners are looking for another application of this, they should contact you about that, right? Uh, they could indeed. Uh, the uh, applicator system is, uh, uh, is patented. Uh, I actually uh, do plan on taking that to industry. Selling this product really is uh, an entry for me to help demonstrate that this uh, universal skin applicator has uh, great efficacy. And uh, I'm sure that people are going to like it. The feedback I've gotten so far is uh, uniformly positive. Uh, and in fact, that applicator system uh, can be used for other products, uh, not just deodorants, not just antiperspirants. But um, I've had people ask me about uh, uh, whether I'm planning on uh, selling an insect repellent or whether I should be selling uh, sunscreen or suntan oil or sun blocks. Uh, in fact, the applicator could be reduced in size and used uh, for, um, for facial foundation for women because they put that on with their fingers and it's kind of a messy process and it's not quite so even. An applicator like this would give a much more even application. But those are other issues. Um, my point is that uh, I wanted to bring a, a good natural product to market that uh, was very potent, safe, could be used on sensitive skin and uh, was just a good product. And I am happy to say I think I've achieved that. I believe so. And um, so here we are able to recommend an ecological, easy to use, healthy, safe <laughs> product that uh, I would recommend to anyone who has any issues with uh, odor control, body odor control. And uh, I think that's about 95% of the population. Uh, I, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, these products are used every day. Um, there has been concern about um, uh, not only aluminum, but petrochemicals that are used in these products. Uh, the, uh, the preservative systems um, are generally used, generally based on uh, various combinations of petrochemicals, and we know that there are some real issues there. Um, there are a lot of natural deodorants on the, product, on the market that are using various kinds of fragrances that they add to the products. And actually, um, interestingly enough, um, about 20% of the fragrances that are on the market have actually not been tested. I'm sorry, are not only not tested, about 20% of them have some potential toxicity. Very few of the fragrances in the marketplace have actually been tested for skin sensitivity, or, um, or allergies, but in fact, we know that there's a certain percentage of those that do cause problems. So mm -hmm. this specifically does not have any fragrance and it's made as a hypoallergenic product. Uh, and I don't think you need to worry about um, having a fragrance when you've got such an effective deodorant. Okay, well, Dr. Ted Toby, we thank you very much for introducing your product to our audience. For if any of the listeners would like to uh, find out more, you can find it at life-enthusiast.com. You can call us at 866-543-3388. And uh, we're looking to help restore vitality to you and to the planet. That's our mission. Thank you very much, Dr. Ted Toby. Thank you, Martin. You have a good afternoon. I hope you're feeling better soon.